Right, so in my mind, it makes sense to spend more money on things that you use often, right? Because it'll just be an overall better experience and you don't have to replace whatever it is as often. And combining that philosophy with my propensity and taste for things that are hipster and douchebag and flavor uh these are my top stationary picks for 2023 that i use on a regular basis let's get into it all right so about 10 years ago uh, i went to dallas and i became very good friends with this guy mark um and <laughs> he's a lot older than me he's like probably like, he's probably 50 but uh, this is a wholesome story i became friends with mark and uh, he's very very responsible for like, the way that i am now you know he uh, is a computer guy he gave me a bunch of raspberry pies and stuff but anyways um he takes me to the galleria which is like the main mall in dallas and we went to the stationery store and <laughs> i was like browsing around because i wasn't very into pens but i come across this mechanical pencil there uh the road string 800 and i like instantly fall in love um i was just so like captivated by the industrial design and just how well it was made and just the overall visuals of the product it was just <laughs> absolutely mind-blowing right um, and uh, that really stuck with me <laughs> mark actually gave me the pencil when I left Dallas and uh, yeah so the Roaching 800 is what kicked off my like I guess love for stationery uh, my interest in stationery and uh, <laughs> shortly after I got it it actually broke um, unfortunately, those are just very fragile because they have so many moving parts. But after that one broke, um, I got the Roaching 600 on my own accord. And this is like the non-retractable baby brother to the 800. And I've been using it ever since. Um, and so yeah, this is like a very important pencil to me. This one in particular, I've been using for nearly a decade. And it's been like all over the world with me. Um, and I've just logged so much time with it. So Right, so the Roaching 600 is my favorite mechanical pencil, but I don't necessarily think it's the best writing mechanical pencil out there. Um, that would be this. This is the IJ Instruments number no. 9, which is a very revered mechanical pencil on the r slash mechanical pencil subreddit, which I frequent. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so this is like a Pentel P205 inside of a custom metal chassis that like one guy in like Ireland or Scotland makes. And yeah, this pencil just is absolutely beautiful in terms of writing. The weight is just so well spread out and it's just so comfortable that I can log so much time on this mechanical pencil. It's just absolutely a work of art. I, I really love this mechanical pencil. <laughs> Right, mine in particular is made out of stainless steel. Um, I just love how stainless steel feels, like stainless steel watches, stainless steel knives. Um, yeah, so stainless steel and the knurling is also an add-on. Um, this one stays at home and the Roaching 600 goes around with me. <laughs> Ow. Um, yeah, I had instruments number nine. Right, uh, as far as pens are concerned, uh, I have a strong preference for fountain pens. Uh, yeah, like I mentioned, like hipster douchebag, right? And within like the subset of pens, I have another strong preference for hexagonal metal bodied ones for whatever, um, which limits my choices pretty considerably. But yeah, these are my favorite fountain pens that I used. Right, so first we have another uh, Rotring. This is the Rotring 600 fountain pen. Um, these are like vintage fountain pens, so unfortunately they're pretty hard to get. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the, the Rotring 600 is interesting. There's many versions of it. Um, unfortunately, most of them don't have these little metal balls that prevent the metal from degrading over time and like causing the cap to slip off. This one in particular does have those little metal balls. The Rotring 600 fountain pen uh, writes like a nail. It's just like a blunt object that oozes ink. Um, so yeah, it's just very utilitarian like and It's just meant to etch things into sheets of paper um, No artistic quality to the writing whatsoever, but yeah, um, I really like the fountain pen It's probably more of like an obscure pick that I wouldn't really recommend to most people But uh, yeah, Rotring 600 fountain pen first pick. All right, next we have uh, Koveco, which is a German fountain pen maker. You probably may, you may have seen the Sport, which is a very popular model they make. This one in particular is the Special. It's a brass fountain pen with a screw lid, and the nib is much more flexy than the Rotring, and um, yeah, so this is like the pen that I do all my journaling with. I really love how this makes my writing look. It just accentuates the curves in a nice way <laughs> i guess um yeah um it's like pretty well thought out it has a converter which is always convenient um i've had some issues where like the ink 
ooze out the nib and it splatters ink everywhere which is why my little holder area here is stained but uh yeah pretty good fountain pen um and this one in particular is kind of special because i got it in new york with my friend and that was a cool trip so yeah kobeko special and if you're curious as to the ink that I'm using, it's Pilot Iroshizuku Takesumi. Um, Iroshizuku is like the line, Takesumi is the color. Um, I'm not very particular about the inks that I use, but I've been very happy with this one. If you have any recommendations, maybe hit me up, let me know. Right, so a lot of the writing that I do nowadays is actually on an e-reader, which uses a Wacom e or my layer. Um, and yeah, so because of this, I have a particular preference for styluses that um, actually magnetically attach to the device and have a side um, button for erasing. Um, and yeah, so my pick for stylus pens for e-readers is the Tab S6 Lite Pen. Um, it's pretty small and compact, narrow-bodied, uh, not hexagonal, but it writes well. The nibs are pretty soft, and it somewhat attaches to all my books tablets. Um, yeah, hard to complain because the price point is pretty low, and it feels good. Right, so next is my <laughs> death note, I guess. This is like my productivity planner. Um, and here I'll write like my condensed thoughts on certain books or, you know, my long-term goals, my goals for the year, long-term planning, stuff like that, five-year goals. Um, yeah, yeah, so uh, this is the Le Campagne du Craft notebook. Um, and it's hella bougie, it's made in France. But um, uh, it feels pretty good to write in. The paper's, you know, not bad. Uh, <laughs> it's honestly probably way too expensive for like what my level of satisfaction that I have with it is. So next is like my, I guess, mass produced notebook that I do all my scratch work in. And uh, th these are like the notebooks I just do most of my writing in. Um, they're from this company, Roaring Springs, <clears throat> and they are grid paper notebooks and the paper itself is green. Um, maybe you've noticed I just don't love white paper. Um, so every all, like all the paper I use is like tinted like ivory or canary or green or just some hue that's not white. Um, and yeah, so I've been very happy with these. They fit my specifications. The ink like fountain pen ink doesn't stain it, and my mechanical pencils write well with it. And I like the paper itself. Right next we have my journal. Um, I'm honestly pretty bad at journaling. Uh, I wish I was better. Uh, it's kind of like a somewhat habit for me. <laughs> I just don't know what to write more often than not, but yeah, um, uh, as far as when I do journal, it's in this notebook, this is um, from Barnes & Noble, and the journal itself is a Monet Bridge one. <clears throat> These are made in Italy, and they all have like a unique pattern, so if you were to buy it, I would highly recommend going in store to make sure you get a good print of the bridge. Um, yeah, um, I like the paper, it's pretty good. And I don't really love like these little watermarks they have at the bottom of the page, but the paper color itself is ivory tinted and it's nice. The quality of the notebook is overall solid and my fountain pens write well in it. So I would recommend it and this would be an exquisite gift to a significant other or a person that you actually like. Right, the final thing on my list here is a, a to-do list, so I actually just like having a physical to-do list because it feels good to cross off the boxes. Um, this one is from a company called Paperways, they're a Korean company. Um, I use it vertically, but it works all the same. Yeah, so uh, as you can tell, it has a hexagonal honeycomb pattern, which is pretty quirky. Um, the paper itself is pretty good. Um, I have this particular space constraint where it's a sandwich in between this notebook and this notebook. So, <laughs> um, as far as like notebooks that actually, or paper pads that actually f work in this space, this one is the only one, and I'm uh, pretty happy with it. Anyways, um, that's the end of today's video. You don't really need any of this stuff, to be honest. Like, you could just use like a 90 cent notebook and like wooden pencils but uh yeah i really enjoy stationery maybe you can tell that is the end for this year's video stay tuned for next year's stationery video bye